Hello and welcome to another edition of Ask David. Uh, the weather has turned a bit wet, to be honest. It's pretty much autumnal rain at the moment, so I'm forced indoors. But every available opportunity, I'm getting outside to get on with some gardening. But you've been sending your questions in, so I'll get on and answer some of them. First off this week, June has got in touch. She is considering buying some 60 centimetre tall dwarf fruit trees. Uh, they're dwarf growing uh, and she's got pots that are around 30 litres in size and 50 litres in size. Um, and she's wondering about potting these bare root um, young trees into those large pots. Now, the one thing about bare roots is that if you put them in too large a pot too quickly, June, then you'll find that the roots will rush out to the sides of the pot uh, where the drainage and the warmth is during the summer. Uh, and you'll find that there'll be a lot of the compost in the center that will be unused. Now that doesn't happen when you plant in the ground because the soil is of a fairly uniform temperature and drainage. So the roots will grow steadily outwards. But in a pot, it's really important that you pot the plants up gradually from first a small pot into a slightly larger pot, larger pot, larger pot, gradually as you go over the years so that you get even rooting throughout the compost and make good use of it. So I would wait until the plants arrive um, and then offer up the root system to a pot of an appropriate size and pot it into a, a size that will just accommodate the roots. Don't go for anything that's too big. Uh, and then in a couple of years time, you can repot into a larger pot and gradually move the plants up into larger pots. Now that's really important for the health of the tree, the young tree, as I say, not only to use all the compost within the container, but also to make sure that the, the compost remains open and aerated as well as moisture retentive. Uh, and it's really crucial that you repot into some fresh compost every so often. So it's a really good idea to do it in that way. Um, you can also trim any of the roots um, just before you plant. If, if you check over the root system um, when they arrive and see if any of the roots are damaged or indeed if they're too big, then as long as you can prune back into not too woodier old roots, but you can prune off some of the fibrous roots and you'll find that over the course of the winter, the trees will reroot uh, and make a really good um, establishment into that compost ready to grow on next year. And just a last thing on the compost front, I'd be inclined to use a loam based compost. So that's a John Innes compost. Um, and you can mix that three parts John Innes compost with one part of multi-purpose compost just to give it some more organic matter and to open the structure up. Isabel's got in touch about some young perennial plants that she potted up about six weeks ago. She says she potted them up into um, some pots uh, and they're still quite small, the plants, and they don't appear to have rooted through. I wouldn't panic here, Isabel, at all. I would just leave them outside, as long as they're hardy plants. I would leave them outside in a sheltered spot, or if you've got it, in a cold frame or a cold greenhouse, somewhere that isn't gonna force them on into growth, but is just gonna give them a little bit of extra protection. But as I say, they'll be equally happy in a sheltered part of the garden. Uh, and then leave those plants to root through into that compost over the course of the winter, because the roots will carry on growing through the winter. Uh, and then see if those roots have filled the pots by around April time next year, uh, by which time you should be able to plant them out in the open garden. June's emailed in about a new lawn in her daughter's garden. She says that the new lawn's gone down very well and it's established, but now there are loads and loads of worms uh, bringing mud and soil to the surface. Uh, and she's wondering what the best way to deal with them is. This is quite typical where the lawn has been laid quite quickly onto ground that hasn't got enough drainage. 
So the ground needs to be really well prepared before you either sow seed or before you lay turf. Uh, and you need to make sure that that drainage is nice and open and that you don't over compact the soil when you're preparing it ready for laying the turf or for sowing the seed. Because if you do get it compacted, then the worms will do that. They'll start making um, worm holes and bringing up worm casts because they're trying to get the soil aerated so that they themselves can survive in it. So the key thing when preparing the ground before you start is to make sure that you add plenty, a reasonable amount rather, of organic matter, but also perhaps some coarse horticultural sand or grit to the soil to make sure that the surface drainage is really good. Uh, and that way there will be enough aeration in the topsoil so that the worms can go about their business without bringing those worm casts up. Now on the lawn that has already been laid and where that mistake may have been made or in an established lawn that might be rather compacted then one of the ways around it is to spike the lawn thoroughly either with a, a border fork pushing the tines into at least half their depth and wiggling it around a little bit uh, and do that probably every six inches every 15 centimeters or so all the way across the lawn you can also hire what are called hollow core or hollow tine spikers or aerators uh, from higher shops uh, and that will take a core out and leave a hole behind and then the idea is that those holes you fill by brushing in coarse horticultural sand that will keep the structure open and the drainage open and allow good aeration and that really is the best way to overcome the word well the worm problems uh, and that will uh, aerate the soil allow the worms to go about their business without bringing those worm casts up to the surface Next, Monaz has got in touch about uh, with a question about lantana. Now, this is a really nice tender perennial plant in this country. It's a bit of a weed species actually in Australia, but it's uh, often grown as a decorative plant in this country in, in Britain uh, during the summer. It's not hardy, so it does need um, protection from the frost to get it through. And Monaz's question is, uh, what to do with it. Is it okay to bring it into a cold greenhouse or is, does there need to be anything else done to it? Lantana in common with a number of other tender perennials things like um, pelagoniums and non-hardy fuchsias and the like all of those things really need frost-free conditions to get them through the winter and it's the same with the lantana the only downside would be if it was a really really cold spell of weather so if the temperatures went below minus one or minus two outdoors for a long period so day after day after day uh, then those borderline hardy plants or those tender plants would really need to be brought into a, a, a bit more shelter indoors but they should be okay in a well-lit a cold greenhouse with all the vents closed overnight and then opening the vents during the day on warm days to keep that ventilation going. Um, as I say they should be okay in that unheated cold greenhouse over the winter but just watch out for the really frosty conditions and if it does get really really frosty for a number of days then perhaps bring the plants into a cold room indoors. Uh, and another little tip with uh, a cold greenhouse is to put a couple of buckets of water into the cold greenhouse on frosty nights uh, and then if the frost does penetrate into the, into the glass house then the frost will be taken up by the water and the water will keep the worst of the frost from inside the glass house. But in any case as long as it's well lit I think you should be able to get away with that lantana manners. And lastly this week Jane is asking about her Hoya plant. She says that some of the leaves are going yellow and dropping off uh, and is wondering what's going on. Now Hoya is a really good indicator of when the light levels start to 
get low in this country. So as soon as those um, day length starts to shorten and the sun is less high in the sky and you get less light into your room, you'll find that the plant will respond by um, aborting or letting some of its leaves drop because it's too much for the plant to keep going uh, with lower light levels, which means that the plant can't make enough sugars and energy to keep it alive. So it responds by dropping those leaves. It might also because be because the Hoya has become pot bound uh, and it's getting dry at the roots. So it might be that it could do with a little bit of a repot and a um, um, brush up if you like. Um, but I wouldn't do that now. I would wait until the spring when the plant starts back into growth quite strongly. So around about March time would be a good idea to knock the plant from its pot, having soaked it thoroughly first and then tease as much of the old compost from around the roots as possible and then repot it into the same pot in some fresh compost. But as I say, it's just as likely that it's responding to the natural dip in day length and light levels uh, and it's nothing to worry about at all. The only thing that you could do would be to move it to a lighter position, somewhere closer to a window or in perhaps a west facing window actually stood in the windowsill itself so that it gets much more light but try and avoid somewhere that gets full sun at midday. So that's it for Ask David for another week and indeed for now. Um, I've had great pleasure in bringing you Ask David, uh, answering your gardening questions right the way through lockdown and on through the rest of the summer and into the autumn. Uh, it never ceases to amaze me how many questions uh, there are about gardening. We're always learning, all of us. It's been an absolute pleasure to answer some of those questions for you. But in the meantime, you can watch every other episode of Ask David, all 31 episodes uh, from the whole year right through until today you can still watch that at gardenersworld.com and don't forget if you do have any gardening questions then the Gardeners World forum online is a great place to go to to get more information and to share tips with your fellow gardeners in the meantime have a great autumn and happy gardening <music>